Regarding entity SEO, how would you explain that to somebody that doesn't know anything about SEO? What is it? So, yeah, so so for me, it's very straightforward. I don't uh, I don't have to go too deep into it. For me, an entity is anything. Uh, and it, well, basically, I, I say anything that deserves a Wikipedia article. Um, that's pretty much the idea or an Encyclopedia Britannica page uh, entry or, or, you know, it's something that that is definable, describable. And it could be as specific as the Eiffel Tower or it could be as generic as hiking. Um, but these are concepts that as humans, we understand. And the thing about uh, describing a page of content in terms of entities uh, is you suddenly cut down the amount of memory that is needed to, to store that information. So if you imagine a search engine trying to read a page of text um, <clears throat> then and, and understand it, in order to do that, it really needs to jump from idea to idea to idea to idea. So if you turn it into a bunch of numbers, which are you know lookups in a in a in an in, a, in an encyclopedia, you can see how when you're trying to organize the world's information, a bunch of numbers together in a certain order says it is as good as a fingerprint for uh, for for defining you know what's on a page. But also, if all those numbers represent concepts and ideas, then then the numbers themselves tell a story. You could almost take those numbers and then translate them back in any, any language, and you'd have a very similar story. So uh, so it became a very powerful and alluring idea for me to say, right, okay. If this, if Google have decided, right, we're going to buy MetaWeb and turn everything into a database, why would they do that? How can I then influence that? What do I need to do? I need to brand, get my brand, my client's brand or my brand into a place where it is constantly showing up in around the topics that are important to me. So for with Majestic, you know, I was very keen on making sure that we were authoritative around the concept of backlinks, you know, um, and with inlinks, um, again, internal linking schema um, and, uh, and entity SEO, as, as, as we've kind of now got as a phrase, these are very important concepts. But if I was Ford, uh, then it was very important that Mustangs get, my, the, the, the Mustang gets associated with cars instead of getting associated with horses in the wild. And that that's where I get to the disambiguation bit, is that really your brand has to spend a lot of time disambiguating itself. I, I, even today, I went on to, I've lost, I've lost my Wikidata entry for Dixon Jones. There's a, there's a, there's a, an architecture, uh, architect's firm that is now bankrupt, by the way, that used to own DixonJones.co.uk. Uh, and I used, uh, used to own, well, I still do own DixonJones.com. And, in the early days, when you're trying to get all the information, uh, you know, all the traffic, at DixonJones.com, I, I did forward slash architects and had a big page on, you know, on why, you know, well, it was disambiguating. It was explaining that I wasn't an architect and that uh, that there was a famous firm, firm of architects. And, you know, but I was trying to rank, rank for Dixon Jones architect for, for no logical reason except that DixonJones.co.uk was outranking me on, on Google, which was um, very annoying to me. Uh, and um, so, so, so disambiguating is really important. But they've got a Wikipedia entry, even though they're bankrupt. Uh, and uh, and um, I, and Wikidata did put one in because of my book, uh, but it hasn't stayed in there, so that's really annoying. So now I've got to have a look at that one again and uh, and fi figure things out. But uh, um, yeah, I've got I've done I've gone off, gone off on tangents, but yeah, um, disambiguation very important. Ah, so regarding <laughs> entity SEO. How yeah. does Google and the whole ecosystem look at things that have multiple meaning? Like viola, it's a flower yeah. and an instrument. Yeah. What, yeah. If you are selling, say, the instrument, then yeah. what things do you need to do to yeah. come up for, for that? So I think rather than, you know, jumping on and saying what Google's doing where I might be right and I might be lying. No, I can do is say, well, how does how does Inlinks do it? Because Inlinks has its own natural language processing algorithm. So we look at pages and turn content into knowledge graphs. And that's kind of what we do. And uh so we have a we spend a lot of time trying to work out whether this page that talks about a Mustang is about a car or whether it's about a horse or whether it's an about an airplane, for example, because there's an airplane in the war. Um, and uh, and and um, for us, 
it's a proximity to other entities. So if you ta talk about Mustang and uh, tires and uh, car, then these these concepts clearly tie it to Mustang the car. If you talk about the wilderness and stables, then probably you're talking about the horse. The problem is you've got to be a little bit careful um, uh, with the algorithm. The algorithm has to be a little bit careful because things like horsepower could apply to both concepts, really. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, uh, but it it usually doesn't take a lot of entities, particularly entities that appear in H tags, or I, I sort of the meaningful parts of a web page. These ones for us carry a bit more weight than uh, than than um, talking about something deep down in the body of the page um, as the primary ideas of a page. So. When we look at a page, we um, we sit there and try and work out the most important ideas on the web page. We then associate those ideas with a Wikipedia URL, so we know which what so what I, what entity we're talking about. That's very important because we know that Google also use Wikipedia for built for for you know Freebase worked on on Wikipedia. Every, you know, a Wikipedia is an open source a data set that anybody can work on but we can also use it to translate ideas so if i sit there and say right this 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 page is about this wikipedia article then um google's knowledge graph will have a database of ideas about any any anything but one of those will be what is the wikipedia article that refers to it so it allows a two-way communication not just with google's database but with any serious um knowledge graph that's really trying to gather information so uh where the faults come is where you kind of get get errors in the system and you do get errors in the system so we have um uh, within our system whenever whenever there is an error if a user sees an error they can press a button and you know i'm, I'm angry about this button it just says fine thank you very much at that point Genie, who manages our knowledge graph, gets notified that you know that somebody was not happy with a with the result. So it's been we gamified it into the into the system. Uh, so we so so Genie is constantly looking at the knowledge graph. So whenever people are analyzing new websites, that generically um, will then go into our system to see, okay, is this a concept that we've come across before? Um, and so now it's kind of accurate for most most people. But if you suddenly come up with, you know, rocks in the paleontophic from the paleontophic tolophonic era, sorry, uh, and we haven't done anything about that before, then you know we're going to make errors, or we're going to not understand the Wikipedia pages, and and someone is going to be saying, well, that hasn't done a very good job. At which point, Gina can say, right, we've now got demand in here. We need to to work those things out. But essentially, it's a database saying, you know, Mustang is. Um, you know, is a horse and um, has four legs and, uh, you know, uh, and uh, lives outside, whereas a Mustang has a, has wheels and uh, and a, an exhaust pipe, except mine, which is electric. Um, that, you know, they, they then then that defines the differences by by the things that you're associated with. So that's the that's the difference, really. Uh, and it works really well for Google when they kind of decided that looking at the world in terms of keywords, and pages just became too too big. Um, you know, the world the, the world increases by millions of pages every day, probably billions. Uh, but it doesn't increase the number of concepts in the world every day. The number of concepts in the world is not growing so fast. Um, and so, uh, organizing the world's information by idea seems in, in, in immensely sensible for a search engine when it gets to that kind of scale, to Google's scale. But it does lose some granularity at the at that point. You know, I mean, it can't, you can't sit there and say, well, everything called Dixon Jones is an architect when there's, you know, at least one Dixon Jones that says, hey, ah. 